that. Let's cross now to Barbara Heineback, former Democrat White House staffer, joining us live from Brisbane. Barbara, do you feel any disappointment that Kamala Harris hasn't been oh able to God. become the first <laughs> um, woman of colour and first woman to be elected to the presidency? I am so disappointed and really insulted. I'm a Howard alum and that she didn't have the decency to walk out and say something to her, you know, to her university, make a comment to the United States. Things were not looking well for her. It wasn't completely over, but short of a miracle, we knew which way this was going. And that she didn't have some grace. I mean, it, it shows us how classless she actually is, a sore loser, and even though it's painful for her, for the Democrats, I think America might be relieved at recognizing and realizing they don't have to put up with this any longer. And if this is what they were walking into, maybe it's better that it gets, you know, cut at the nip right now. Well, but, she, um, she's such me, a poor I'm candidate, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. She's such a poor candidate. Of course, she was a pr surprise pick uh, for vice president as the running mate for Joe Biden, but he said he was going to pick a woman of colour and she got the gig. She's never won an election of any substance. This would have been the first one if she did. Didn't get a vote when she mm -hmm. contested the primaries. Uh, why do you think she's failed? What was the biggest mistake of the Democrat campaign? The biggest mistake was her not selecting Shapiro. I mean, she had an ace, you know, an ace in the hole, and she didn't take that. Shapiro is so well-respected, liked. He's doing an incredible job in Pennsylvania. And the reason she didn't take it is another part of that personality that, you know, eked through. She is so completely insecure that she could not have someone that bright around her to upstage her and outshine her. And so this is why she didn't select him, I'm pretty sure. She made a lot of mistakes by bringing on all of Hollywood and Beyonce and all yeah. of these people. But they always do that. Beyonce wasn't very happy. They well, always Beyonce do that. Beyonce wasn't happy. Yeah, it's it's pathetic. Mm -hmm. Now, now you know the Democrats. You're connected to them. You've worked in the White House for Democrat presidents. So tell us what they're going to go through in coming days. They may lose the House and the Senate as well. They may have gone backwards in the House and, and lose the Senate. Um, a, a very, very dark mm -hmm. uh, day for the Democrats. Do you expect them to learn? Do you expect serious recriminations? Um one of the things I noticed is, that, or I really believe is going to happen, is that, you know, oh, we have to remember that Obama and Michelle did not come out to endorse her for about more than a week, about 10 days after all of the other elite Democrats did, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all of the others. But they didn't come out. And Obama really wanted to have a proper you know, go through the process of the primary and everything, let the Democratic National Committee choose and select who they really wanted for a candidate. Obama has been telling people all along, before she became vice president, not to do this and not to jump to that. Willie Brown as well, who, you know, the, who had been the mayor of San Francisco, said give her a position somewhere, but not VP. Not so VP. people closer to her knew what was, um, you know, coming on. And so she, they didn't listen to that. The Congress, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I think that um, if we have a couple more Republicans in the Senate to carry us through these next four years, but I think it's going to be easier for Trump than yep. it was, you know, back in 2016. It could well be. He could be a much more powerful president than he was last time around. Thanks for joining us, Barbara.